Hey guys, it's Jenny Wallach with Wallach Real Estate Group in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I am so excited to introduce you to my friend Seychelle Van Poole out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And we have met a couple times over the years and I'm super excited to get to know her even better and share a lot of her insight and agent success secrets with you guys. So welcome Seychelle. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and uh, it's a real honor. So thank you for including us. You are so sweet and kind. You know, the thing we're going to talk about today is something that we haven't covered yet. And I think a lot of agents, um, if they're still a single agent and they're visualizing their future and a path and, and growth for them, it would probably include ideas around a showing assistant or some kind of help when we get to the buy side of our business. Yeah, so you're an expert on this, so why don't you just go with... Uh... Sure. Um, so this is a, a business model that we have had in place on our team now for um, just over six years. Um, it is, to me, the best thing since sliced bread. It has revolutionized our buy-side business. And before we started using um, what's known in the industry as the showing agent model, mm -hmm. What was happening was if we found on the buyer agent side, you could blow and go and burn the midnight oil for about 18 months. Mm -hmm. um, you would do anywhere from 24 to 40 transactions um, without any assistance. And in that year, you'd hit that number and you would just start burning out. If you could get to 50 transactions, you were really, really, really tired and burn out. Yeah. And, and we found that quality of life was suffering, energy was suffering, vacations were suffering, family was suffering. Um, all in the name of trying to increase your production. And so um, we're big on our team about per person productivity, about um, helping people to attain a really attain a really high quality of life and allow them um, an opportunity to have a great net income at the same time. And so we started um, talking to Josh Anderson and to Aaron Armstrong, who both really led the charge on a national basis. Mm -hmm. showing agent model and started to say, hmm, I wonder if we could do that in our business. Um, from there, we basically made a list of everything that a buyer agent did during the transaction from lead generation all the way through the closing. We had a transaction manager then from once the property went under contract through the closing table already. We already had two um, fully licensed full-time administrative people. So we already had the admin leverage coverage. So now we're talking about help after you've added your admin. I wouldn't recommend you do this before right. administrative help. Um, so we made a list of everything that happened during that process. And what we found was, um, number one, that service was compromised because an agent couldn't do it all well. And we found the second thing was, um, there, the majority of the time that was being spent that was um, cross-trainable or easily implementable was the point after the buyer representation agreement until the point that the buyer finds the home. Mm -hmm. so basically what we did is we found that 80% of the time in a buyer's agent experience or transaction is enclosed in that time. And so we started asking a question of what would a world look like where a buyer is getting like super high quality quality intel on the property that they're seeing, that this agent is like a ninja that can find out details about the property before they go see it because they have the time to focus in and become a real specialist in that area, thus enhancing the entire process for the buyer and at the same time leveraging 80% of the time for the buyer's agents to focus on what they do better, right? Which is they should be lead generating, they should be signing buyer reps, and they should be negotiating contracts. Mm -hmm. so we said if they're focusing on those three things, right, the three L's, um, they're focusing on those three things, how much more could they do? And so we basically created a model where um, a market, we call them market specialists for today, mm -hmm. I'll use um, a showing agent, um, but where a showing agent could join the team, get trained up in um, 30 to 45 days or less and have income coming in within 60 days. That was our goal. And um, it's really been phenomenal. And so now we're creating career tracks into our team instead of a flat line level position where we're looking at them saying, okay, you're going to start as a showing agent or market specialist track into a buyer's agent or a listing agent, and then start building mm -hmm. 
for you within it. So we started, instead of looking at our business level all in a lateral, we're now looking at it where we really have a much deeper bench as far as leadership development goes. The other thing too we liked about the market specialist model or showing agent model was that an agent is walking into somebody else's pipeline in day one. And so instead of me walking in trying to learn to be a buyer's agent from day one, that takes six months to train somebody, I think, to do really well at it. You can like throw them in the deep end and pretend that they know what they're doing in 30 days. But let's be real. Like that's not realistic. Like to be an actual like legitimate <laughs> threat, you need six months to really train somebody well. Um, and so we found that instead of six months to build a pipeline and to build revenue, we could do that in you know, 30 to 60 days and walk into somebody else's pipeline, walk in with somebody else having a vested interest, be getting cross trained with multiple people cross training you instead of just one. It really created a much more enhanced experience. Wow. So now that you've been doing this for quite a while and you've seen great success, looking back, were there some challenges or things that came up that you learned, oops, that doesn't work? Sure. Um, I think the first one was getting buy-in from the, the team members. I think a yeah, lot of people yeah. think, well, nobody can do the job as good as I do. Nobody can find the properties as well as I do. Nobody can educate the client as well as I do. And uh, we had a team member, her name was Audrey, that had um, interned with us for a couple of years and then was full-time with us as a buyer's agent. And she decided to go back and get her PhD in psychology and really wanted to stay with the team and pay for school by being on our team. She was awesome but we knew we couldn't do it with her not having leverage. So she was our first beta tester and she really worked hard to cross train our first showing agent, Carolina. And um, she, with a showing agent, she worked half time because she went to school full time. She worked half time about 20 to 25 hours a week and our other buyers agents worked full time. She did 45 transactions. She did 28. Wow. That says a lot about a lot of things, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And we said, wow, there's, there's a lesson that we could take here. Now can we duplicate it, right? But it took someone coming in and proving it. I think until yeah. somebody sees it proven, this one over here was like, mm -mm, nope, not letting go, not going to do it, not willing to, nope, you know, I'm not going to do it over here. Yeah. So to say, well, we're going to have to define what our model looks like. We're going to have to define, you know, what we're willing to do moving forward. And, and for us, the standard became that every single home that gets sold on the buy side will use a showing agent. So I can see the ego coming into play for buyer agents that are already in production. What about for the marketing specialist, as you call them now, or showing agent as some call them, what about for them? Do they feel like they're in an assistant type role or is their training and accountability all along the way, building them up with, with confidence and, and a growth plan? That's a great question, Jenny. I think, I, I think back to like when you walk into um, a doctor's office, right? Mm -hmm. And you're talking to a nurse practitioner versus talking to um, a RN, like in that conversation goes, oh, well, this nurse is going to kind of do your blood work and she's kind of new and she doesn't really know what she's doing. I hope she didn't poke you, you know, <laughs> versus someone saying you're going to meet with our nurse practitioner. She's highly trained. Um, she pretty much runs the ship here, and this is her area of expertise, and she's going to take all your vitals and make sure everything is buttoned up so the doctor can spend the most important time with you on focusing on you as a patient mm -hmm. instead of on all the little bitty details that need to happen, right? How much different do you feel in that doctor's experience when you're sitting there getting your blood drawn going, <laughs> you know, versus, oh, okay, well, they've got this. It doesn't matter whether it's their first day or not, the level of confidence and the way the pass off has occurred <clears throat> excuse me, is, is so different. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing on the team. The market specialist for us or showing agent truly becomes a partner in that business, right. and a partner in that experience. And their job, they own. It's not like you're passing them down and saying, well, my assistant Laura is going to do this for you. You're going, no, this is Jody. She's phenomenal at what she does. Mm -hmm. This is she does all day, every day in a home in a year, she sees over 2000 houses. Do you think she's going to know how to help you peg yours? Her job is to show you somewhere between three and seven homes and be able to nail the exact purpose house and get all of the information that you guys can't get on Zillow or any other website um, to help you make the best decision for your family. 
And on top of that, she's looking for homes off market and building relationships with the realtors out there so that when our offer gets presented, we want to work with you, not somebody else. Yeah, I mean, that's a totally different experience, right? And it's the exact same script that all of us agents, as we started growing our team, had to start having a buyer agent. So exactly right. It, but it, it is scary letting it go. Yeah. And I think once you realize that if you can have a higher quality of life, mm -hmm. when you're good to yourself and you're good to your family and you're good here, you can give so much more to your clients. And so having that true partner in that market specialist role is really phenomenal. So we have three buyer's agents and three market specialists and everybody rotates through. So on our lead flow, it goes buyer agent one, two, three, one, two, three with leads. The mm -hmm. same goes on the market specialist line. The buyer's agent would go one, two, three, one, two, three. And we did that intentionally so that somebody, if somebody had a dry month as a buyer's agent, that market specialist wasn't dying on the vine with that person's pipeline, they're yeah. spreading out the productivity around the team. Well, that was actually my question. It was going to be, do they work in pairs and kind of form their own team? And I could see where that could have some challenges. And you've just said that, no, that's not the way you do it. So, yeah. I mean, I, I know of some teams that do that and I think mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. I think um, for us, we view it as a cross training opportunity because mm -hmm. we're, we're not looking at this as a dead end role. We're looking at it as a promotion path. Mm -hmm. So the more that we can train you in the process, the better. I would also encourage if someone is looking at this model to pay the buyer's agent or the market specialist or showing agent first mm -hmm. off the top, not giving the buyer agent, oh, here's X amount of percentage and you pay this market specialist or showing agent. What happens with that is cherry picking starts to happen. And when you start to see cherry picking, you start to see what them taking the higher end deals. Mm -hmm. I want to work with this buyer because they're going to be easier. I'll only give you the hard low end ones. Right. That creates a, a negative experience for that showing agent. But it also does a reverse of what we're trying to do, which is give them leverage, right? You're like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to leverage your time. Focus on lead generation. Yeah. Don't go cherry pick buyers. So paying off the top and basically saying to the buyer's agent, well, if you choose not to use a showing agent, okay. that's a bummer for you because you're really not going to make any more money. So just that's sad for you that you chose not to leverage your time. That's a different conversation. Okay, I'm going to have to replay that later on and really absorb that because I think there's a lot of power in that. That's the, Most people aren't doing it the, that way in the country, yeah. and I think that is our secret sauce. Yeah, that's powerful because of course any buyer agent would say, I see the value in it and they may be going so fast. They just don't even want to slow down to bring on that showing specialist to help them mm -hmm. that they know will help them hit their bigger goal. They just can't slow down enough. So yeah. as, a, as a leader on your, as the leader of your team in the training and accountability of these, of these agents, what is that? 30, 60, 90 timeline look like for you in their steps of learning? So the first 30 days for a um, showing agent is super intensive. It is very uh, nine to five in the office. They are shadowing on open houses. They're in on lead generation. Um, everything that the team does, they are very engaged. Um, they have intensive, Barb uh, is awesome and does very intensive contracts training. It's like 10 or 12 hours of contracts training. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and then our goal is, is to get you dangerous, right, from MLS, like from the leaving the buyer agent meeting, fully understanding what the buyer is looking for, learning how to do the searches, how to pinpoint exactly what they're looking for and follow up, how to stock the home enough to help make an educated um, presentation of the home, right? Um, and I'll give you an example of what that script should look like. Mm -hmm all the way through asking the right questions of the buyer in the house to help the buyer understand that this is the home that they want. Yeah. At that point, the handshake happens where they say, great, Melise or Charmy or Blake or whoever it is on our team is going to get started on the offer for you while we're sitting in the car right now. Okay. So in 30 days, we can really ninja train that piece of it. Um, we're going to be dangerously good. They're not going to be the end all be all, but they're going to be really, really, really good at that part. And that's the part we're really trying to, in those first 30 to 60 days, just nail, 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 nail down. We'll share the script. So I think a lot of um, consumers view a realtor as walking into a home and opening the door and then saying, well, what do you think? Or do you like this house? 
or could you see yourself living here? And <laughs> all those things are very nice questions, but they really don't do anything to add value as their subject matter expert in real estate, right? And so what we have trained our market specialists to do is to prepare so well before they walk into the home where they have a packet on the house before they're walking in and to say, Jenny, I know we're seeing four homes today. And this house that we're seeing, I'm going to let you know right now, is actually the highest dollar per square foot home that we're going to see. I've already run comps for the neighborhood, and I want to let you know that it is actually priced at the very top of the neighborhood, and it's actually a little bit overpriced. So unless you absolutely love this home and have to have it, I'm going to let you know that we're going to recommend that you maybe look at other options for houses or that you need to be comfortable overpaying for this house compared to the other three homes we're going to see today. Is that okay with you? Okay. Okay. Now, vice versa, on the other end of that, we're at home number two. And I'm going to say to you, Jenny, we're walking into this home today. I need you to understand that this home is actually the best priced house that we're going to see. It's priced very competitively and fairly. The seller isn't gouging you. I want to let you know that we've already talked to the realtor on this house, and they do have one offer on the property, but they have agreed to wait until we see the property to present the offers. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in this, we do need to get working on an offer right as soon as we leave. Does that sound good? It does sound good. What a different experience, right? Yeah, it does. And you're not being the pushy stereotypical because you're just arming them with information to give them the best, to make the best decision. Yeah. And I, I, it doesn't matter to us which home they buy. We want them to buy the perfect home for them, but we do want them to buy it with an educated mindset and knowing what they're walking into. How many times do we sit there at the listing table and hear a seller say, well, I wish my agent would have told me X, or I never even understood what was going on in the market. I didn't realize that I was buying at the peak of the market or that I paid more than any of my neighbors. We hear that all the time. And so for us, if we can add value to helping them make that educated decision, that's a tremendous value that that showing agent can give. And that's a true partnership relationship. It's not an assistant. It's a true partnership relationship. Right. So this, of course, will make it really clear for anyone that watches this. This conversation only gets to happen after you've already had a sit down consultation yes. with the clients. You've already established the trust so that then you are free to share this, right? Exactly. We do. <laughs> buyer representation consultations, we sign buyer rep agreements, and the market specialist or the showing agent actually attends that meeting with the buyer agent mm -hmm. at sitting at the table together so that they can have the conversation to set expectations right there. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so the showing <laughs> agent, they're going to high five their buyer agent, they're going to pass the baton, mm -hmm. and then the baton gets past the, the buyer agent's going to write the contract and negotiate it. Yes. Does it ever come back to the showing agent again? Um, occasionally, they will uh, either come and attend an inspection. Usually, the buyer agent is doing that. And occasionally, they'll attend a, a final walkthrough. Um, but the majority of the time, then the buyer agent is taking the baton at that point, And the market specialist is then on to focusing on the next client. So how many buyers can a, a solid showing agent, marketing specialist, how many can they be working with at the same time? Our average buyer's agent right now closes anywhere from five to six a month. Mm -hmm. um, and the average market specialist is anywhere from four to six a month. And awesome. I think the majority of our market specialists in their first year make up somewhere between 75 and 80,000 net. And all of our, pretty much all of our buyer's agents are over 100,000 net every year. Yeah. And let's just point out what's your average sales price in, in the Dallas area. Uh, 259,000 is our average sales price. Okay. Um, and our team average is right around 340,000. Right. That's, that's, and that's how you're able to, to leverage off um, some yeah. of your time here. So let me ask you this question. Um, you mentioned earlier before we, when we got on that as a team every day, you guys zoom and you lead generate together. You want to share with everyone how you do that? Sure. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's so cool. I love Zoom. I think it's fantastic. Um, yeah. So we at 8.30 every morning as a team log on to Zoom um, on Mondays and Thursdays together. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, we're in the office as a team together. But on Monday and Thursday from 8.30 to 10.30 every morning, we're up on Zoom. It looks like the Brady Bunch. I don't care if you're in your pajamas, but we're smiling and dialing and, mm -hmm. and making an impact on people's lives and giving them a call. Um, for lead generation. And then uh, we have our team huddle from uh, 1030 to 1045 right after that. And, and that's 
the numbers. Yeah, and so that's still done on Zoom. And the, and everyone on your team lead generates. It's a yeah. Yep, and on the showing agent role, if you want to promote up, you participate in lead generation. If you're interested in more staying where you are, that's great. Um, then you can do that. But if, if you want to promote, then lead generation is a part of that activity, and you've got to get really good at it. So what does the path of progression look like for a showing agent that comes onto your team and they've got their 30 day training and then all of that, where do they go from there? Um, so we made the mistake originally of setting expectations with our first couple people that, Oh, you should be in this role for 90 to 120 days and then promoting. And that's great in a lot of ways, but what it doesn't do is allow somebody to get a pipeline steady underneath their belt. So now what we say is really you're going to be on in that role for nine to 12 months mm -hmm. with the goal to promote them far sooner than that, but we need to under promise and over deliver. And so um, what will happen is a person, we're watching their personality, we're watching how they work with clients to see whether they're going to track to the listing agent or buyer side mm -hmm. role. And uh, if they're going into the buyer side role, they pretty much do uh, three transactions from beginning to end by themselves. So they understand the entire process. We found when we shortcutted that, they didn't quite understand where the handoffs needed to happen because they hadn't been on the other side. Mm -hmm. So they do three transactions solely by themselves and then they get added into the uh, lead rotation after that third one. Wow, that's awesome. I love everything that you're sharing here. And I know that so many, there's so many ways of, of having a great business. That's the beauty of it is there's no wrong way to do it. Um, and we all are trying different things and testing out different things. I think it's a matter of, of what works best for, for you and what works best for your personality and, and the way you grow your business. And yeah, it's, I'll say this has been great for us and it's, it's been a highly leveraged way to help our buyer's agents gain quality of life, but there are certainly other ways you could do it too. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we, we grow a team, not because we, um, really, desire world domination we grow a team because we love helping people and giving back and the more that we can help our our agents on our team have a big life as well is awesome too exactly right. well cool. while we are wrapping up i didn't get to share what was your production last year in 2017 and what's your big goal for 2018 so we can help you out sure um so we closed uh 213 sales last year for 77 million in production Mm -hmm. um, our goal this year is 413 sales. So we've got big goals. Um, and uh, we love what we do. So we'd love, if anybody has anyone moving to Dallas, Fort Worth, or Austin, we'd love to help you out. So how can they get in touch with you when they have a referral? Um, the best way is to give us a call. Um, I'll give you our phone number. It's 972-608-0777. Or you can email us at Barbara, B-A-R-B-A-R-A, -A -A, at Vanpool, V-A-N-P-O-O-L-E dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love all of our really long, funny names? Yeah. Why not spell it out? Yeah, yeah might as well. Great. We love what we do. Well, we appreciate you for sharing all your knowledge and look forward to seeing you here pretty soon in Anaheim. Oh, I'll see you in a couple of days. Yeah. Well, have a great day. If you guys need anything from me, my number is 918-706-9845. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks. Bye.